Hey guys, I hope you're all enjoying the different activities with the Summer Innovation Challenge Box Program. My name is Erica and I work at NSWC Dahlgren Division as a biochemist. At NSWC DD, we pride ourselves on technical excellence. We are a product focused and mission driven organization. That means I work with a team of scientists and engineers to tackle problems that military members might encounter in the field so that they can do their jobs to the best of their abilities. I have spent most of my career here at Dahlgren working with microbiological decontamination of surfaces. So when you think microbiological, think of something that's very, very small. Think of something like a germ that might give you the flu or the droplets that come out when you sneeze or something that you might need a microscope to see. Surface decontamination is essentially a process which will remove from or destroy a contaminant like bacteria, viruses, or toxic chemicals in order to make them safe to handle or work on. My group works to make decontamination of ships more materials friendly. That means that whatever we make to give to personnel on ships has to be able to be used without destroying the materials, namely metal, the ships are made of. Right now, bleach is the most effective way to decontaminate surfaces that may have bacteria or viruses on them, and bleach is very corrosive. So when something is corrosive, that means it eats away at another material. So when I'm talking about an acid, if I put that on, say, a metal, it will start to eat through the surface until it gets all the way through. The stronger an acid is, the faster that it will get through that metal, and that means it's more corrosive than something else might be. Bleach is corrosive because it is known as a strong base. It has a pH of between 11 and 13 on the pH scale. pH is a measure from 0 to 14 of how many hydrogen ions are in a solution. The more hydrogen ions you have, the more acidic something is considered to be. Water has a pH of about 7.0. See water, a pH closer to 8. A pH between 7 and 8 is the goal of my group when making solutions. One way to test the pH of a solution is by using pH paper or litmus paper. Litmus paper is a red or blue paper strip which changes color in the presence of an acid or a base. Blue paper will turn red in the presence of an acid, and red paper will turn blue in the presence of a base. pH paper has a wider range of color indications and will turn different colors depending on the pH of a solution. Now, we can get into some fun stuff. But before we get into fun stuff, you have to remember that safety is an important thing. So what I have here are my very special safety glasses, which I put on anytime I do chemistry. Remember, whenever you're doing an experiment, make sure to always wear safety goggles so that you don't get any chemicals in your eyes. I also have some safety gloves, which are always good to have when you're dealing with chemicals. Make sure to always wear safety gloves during experiments to protect your hands from harmful chemicals and substances. And now we get into the boxes. So what you should have in your box are some containers, you can put solutions in and then you have some solutions for you guys to test. So what I have here is some water, acetic acid, which you might know as vinegar, orange juice, calcium carbonate, which are basically antacids that I crunched up and put into the water, apple juice, hydrogen peroxide, which you can get in your medicine cabinet, and then I also have salt water. The last thing I have is detergent which is basically just laundry soap put into water, which is slightly basic. So now you have your solutions. You should also have ready-made pH paper. So now that you have your pH strips, all you have to do is take your strip and take one of your solutions. It doesn't matter which. I like vinegar. The vinegar, you know, is an acid. So when you put your paper in, into the solution itself, you can see that it turns a reddish purple color. So when you're using these strips and it turns red or pink, you know that you have an acid. So if you have something that's basic, like hydrogen peroxide, and you put your strip in, it'll turn a different color. So it turns a little bit green. I don't know if you can see the difference there, but it's definitely not an acid. Water 
is right in the middle of that pH scale. Its pH is 7.0, and water ideally should not turn color of any pH paper. And you can see that it basically does not. Now we need your help. When our team at Dahlgren is working on ways to decontaminate a ship, one of the things we have to worry about is materials compatibility. What that means is that we have to make sure that we don't make the environment of a ship, which is the ocean, any more corrosive than it already is. Corrosion damages metals, which means it would damage the ships we're trying to decontaminate. As I mentioned, seawater is between seven and eight on the pH scale, and that means any decontaminant we produce must be at least that, if not a little bit less. So your challenge is to experiment to find out which material in your kit would be the best to use to decontaminate the surface of a ship. Remember, the best would be the solution with the pH closest to that of seawater. You have your mission, best of luck, and have a great summer.